We're here at VMworld 2016. I'm here with Rob Cummins from Tagile. How's it going, Rob? Very well. Thanks for having us, Curtis. Nice shirt you got there. I understand we're going to get to that later. Little, we are indeed. A little branding. I'm sure that's branding. Yeah, I'm a little sure. ACDC theme for the booth. A little bit. A yep. little bit. So let's talk about the cloud. Sure. Right? Uh, the cloud is, it has clearly happened, is yes. happening, yep. will happen. Mm -hmm. We went to the cloud for a lot of reasons, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the issues that we wanted to go to the cloud was the tech refresh. Right. Right. The, right. The, this idea that we had to, you know, refresh our technology every three years or five years, mm -hmm. and the, the pain and, and, and problems that that came from, or right. that came with that. If you go to a public service provider, they're going to take yeah. care of that mess yeah. for me. I don't have to deal yeah. with it. And then the other, of course, is scale, sure. right? That, that when I buy storage in chunks, uh, you know, I got to keep buying it in chunks. And then with that is this idea of, you know, we came up with this word of lumpy capex, right? right? Absolutely. Uh, the idea that that my my expenses look like this, right? right? Mm -hmm. And that with the with the cloud, they, they look like this. Of course, yep. it's more like they look like this. Right, as but, you grow right? your business, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. yeah. What do you think happened? or what has happened to companies that have made this transition? They've started, they've moved a lot of their storage to the cloud. What what things did we get that we didn't expect? Sure, we're talking to a lot of people at the booth about this. They're saying, I have moved some things to the cloud, but on paper, these things look great, but there's some things that happened that weren't entirely anticipated. I lose a lot of the performance integrity of when I, I have and own my own data center. Um, security is a big risk. If I can put my own firewalls and literally my own lawyers in front of my data, I can protect that a lot better. And then back to things like you're talking about, scale. If I need to, if I need to scale that thing up, if I can have a platform that'll do that for me gracefully, I'd much rather do that because the cost structure, a lot of these public cloud providers is a lot more than what people expect. So we don't think we, from a, uh, the, the cloud we don't think quite that the performance is, is everything we want it to be. That was little, very, very expensive. Right, and then there's the security aspect, and then I think uh, the scale is, is spelled like this in the cloud, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, so, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. So what have, what have you guys uh, come out with that is meant to address all of these things? Sure but not have these things. Yep, so here at VMworld we're announcing our IntelliFlash and that's what the CP for is for cloud platform. What's the HD? That's high density. So high density. last right. year at VMworld we announced high density. So now we've got this little ACDC play we've got going on. Mm -hmm. um, but this cloud platform gives you massive performance using NVMe Flash, so five times better latency than we even have with SSEs today. And it scales up to a good six petabytes raw so if you give me you know, a, a three or five X multiplier, it's a huge platform that you can scale into. You can start small and grow very, very easily. You, this has enough performance and enough front end controllers to house a high end database all the way down to the marketing guys' PowerPoint presentations because of the economics that get you down to below this, right. uh, 50 cents a gigabyte. Right, so let's see, I heard, I heard you talk about this one and this one, well, which is the same as that one. Uh, what about the security aspect? Well, that's what I was talking about. You can put your own firewalls and lawyers okay, that, in front of you. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Firewalls and lawyers. So you can like give me a checkbox yeah. on that one, too. Okay, all right. We'll do that. But then we look at these, these guys. These are the problems traditionally with products like yours. Right, yeah. right. So what we've done is we've put a couple programs together to address these. The first one is called Lifetime Storage. And it's, an, it's a part of our support maintenance agreements. You can actually buy into a tech refresh on a three or five year cadence, depending on your depreciation schedule. And in that three or five years out, we'll come in and swap the controllers, the storage media, um, the interconnects if they're faster in three or five years, under that maintenance contract. So you never have to go chase more CapEx again. It's just that we like to call it the last storage array you'll ever have to buy, because we'll take care of the tech refreshes uh, with you and for you. And then the last piece is what we call IntelliPay, which we effectively put a smart meter on the side of the array. Mm -hmm. And as your capacity goes up and down, we meter that and actually charge in gigabyte months, kind of like you and I pay our power utility in kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. So now we've taken the CapEx piece completely off the table as well. So that checks those boxes off as well. So is that, are those, are those, would I choose one or the other? Actually the most programs? powerful thing is when you combine both of them. Where Tech refreshes mm -hmm. are taken care of, mm -hmm. and the billing is is charged just like the public cloud guys do in gigabyte months. 
And then what happens if I need to add capacity to that along the way? That just gets rolled in, and we just we just raise up. Just raise the, up the maintenance maintenance. Right. Cost. So we'll, we typically we raise up the maintenance cost on the tech refresh portion of it, and then this, if you add new gear, IntelliPay doesn't do anything until you start using it. So as you write data into that is when you start seeing that increase with IntelliPay. Cool. Yeah. All right, so, so it's not a pay as you grow; it's a pay as you boom, use. Boom, boom. We're right. done. So I'm sure lots of people here watching this video are very um, aware of. It's actually pretty hard to differentiate these new flash arrays because your garden variety mid-range array based on disk is usually only doing seven or ten thousand IOPS. All of us are our entry-level arrays are doing between fifty and seventy thousand IOPS. So performance isn't the problem. So you know, mm -hmm. going out and say I can do X number of IOPS not really interesting because we're all so much faster mm -hmm. than yesterday's technology. It's these kind of like you and I were talking about earlier. We call them non-product deliverables that we wrap around the product that we we feel we can truly differentiate on. Cool. Well, thanks for coming. You bet, Curtis. Thanks all for right. having us. And thanks for watching. Again, this is W. Curtis Preston from Stored Switzerland. <laughs>